I've been renovating my Victorian home and gradually replacing the old light fixtures. I love vintage lighting, but unfortunately, I didn't like the style of the ones that were left in the house. I love a good vintage piece, but finding them has been difficult, and the ones that I liked weren't in my budget. I really didn't want to go with standard modern lighting from places like IKEA, and I wanted something a bit more unique. So that led me to try making my own lighting. Over time I've made quite a few, and I thought it'd be fun to go back over them and reflect on the process. Some of them I liked more than others, and some of them really didn't go to plan, so I'm going to rate them out of 10 and see which ones were worth the effort. The first one I made was a dupe of this DIY tassel lampshade for my bedroom. Here are some examples of ones you can buy online. Mine obviously cost me a fraction of the price, but it did take a really long time to make. I got some rings from an old lampshade which I spray painted gold and then I made a ridiculous amount of tassels. It took me many hours over multiple sittings to get the amount that I needed. I probably ended up spending around £70 on the wool and the other materials were generally things that I had around the house. This was the final result. I think overall it brings in some nice warmth and texture to the space but I think the design really isn't great for lighting up a room because it does block a lot of light. It's fine for a cosy bedroom but not really suitable for other places. I actually put in a smart bulb so I can control the colour and brightness for a more cosy vibe. I could have made the tassels less thick and less close together but I still think it would have blocked out a lot of light. One cool thing is that it creates this interesting pattern on the ceiling at night. Overall I would give this a 4 out of 10. It is pretty and I'm going to keep it after all that hard work but it's not my favourite and I don't think it was worth all of the time and effort that went into it. The next one I made was this huge bamboo pendant light for the living room. This one was inspired by DIY Danny's video. This was very cheap to make. I bought some raffia, wood circles and wood beads and then the sticks are actually from some old bamboo blinds from Facebook Marketplace and the ring is from an old lampshade. I initially made this even bigger with the idea that if I attach the whole length of the bamboo I could then cut down to whatever size I wanted. It's still pretty oversized and I probably could have gotten away with making it a bit smaller. This one had a lot of steps to it so I won't cover the whole thing but if you want me to do a longer video on this then just let me know. So to rate this out of 10 I'd probably give it an 8. It looks expensive and dramatic and it helps tie in a big space that has multiple zones. However it is quite fiddly and annoying to put on and take off. It's very delicate. I don't know what I'm going to do with it when I move. I don't think it will survive the transition. For this next one I had some pieces of handmade paper that someone had given me a while ago. They were really big sheets so I thought they'd be perfect for a folded paper pendant light. I folded each sheet into equal sections and attached them together. I then drilled a hole in one end to attach a metal ring. I then glued the two ends together to complete the circle. I found this metal cone on Amazon but the angle was too steep so I went back to the drawing board. I instead cut a hole in a wood circle and attached it to the metal ring using short pieces of wire. The length of the wire determines the angle of the fan so I can go back and change it if I want to. I then used velcro style command strips to attach another circle to hide the wire. I think I would give this one an 8 out of 10. It's very simple and versatile and I could see myself maybe using this on a floor lamp in the future if I had space. Right now it doesn't have a home so it's just chilling out in my dumping ground of a hallway. Next up is this wall mounted grow light. As the days were getting shorter and darker I needed to get a grow light for my plants. I wanted it to be simple and not take up too much visual space. I also wanted a specific wattage, so it ended up being easier and cheaper to make something rather than try and find exactly what I needed in the shops. All I needed was a wooden dowel and a scrap piece of wood. I sanded and stained the dowel, 
I attached it to wood with glue and a screw and made two holes to attach it to the wall. The cord just wraps around the dowel and hangs off the top. I also added a nail in so the cord would hang straight. You could probably use wire clips for this but for me the nail works and you can't see it from below so that's the lazy option. I was just looking for a quick fix so it probably could be a bit neater. You could probably countersink the screws and put a screw cap on but I didn't really mind them showing. By the way this bulb gives off the most realistic daylight compared to other LEDs but the fact that it feeds my plants whilst lighting up my work desk is pretty great. I would give this a 9 out of 10 simply because it was so easy and simple and really effective for what I needed. This last one is just a little bonus light, a little hack. I got this origami paper shade from H&M which is meant to hang from a pendant but I attached it to an IKEA lamp base to create this cute table lamp. If you like this video and want to see more please consider subscribing, it would really help me make more videos in the future. And so with that, thank you for watching. Let me know if you agree or disagree with these ratings or if this has given you any ideas. Maybe you didn't like them, that's okay too. If you have any ideas of what I could try next, I would be interested in hearing them. And thank you again.